Hello, and thank you for joining today's webinar, Why Social Media Marketing Matters and How to Be Effective with It. My name is Melissa Tran, and I'll be moderating today's session. I'd like to introduce you to both of our speakers today, Aaron Hannaford, our VP of Marketing, and Yancy Joyner, our Solution Consultant. Thanks, Melissa, and thank you everyone for joining us today. Before we dive into today's content, I'd like to take a couple minutes and share exactly what it is we'll be talking about today. We're going to spend a few minutes talking about why social media is important and particularly important for B2B marketers. We'll then share a couple strategies around how to be effective with social media marketing. Yancey will join me and he will do a deep dive into the Click Dimensions social marketing platform to show you just how our social marketing tool works and we will save some time for Q&A at the end. I'll encourage you to use the question and chat functionality throughout the webinar. As Melissa said, she'll be moderating, but she'll also be available to answer questions that you might come up with throughout the course of the webinar. Um, we will save time for Q&A at the end, as we mentioned, so don't hesitate to type your question in as it comes up. Um, your lines are muted, so you won't be able to verbally speak your question, um, but by typing it in, Melissa will see it and we'll answer just as many as we can. If you have a question about your particular instance um, or a particular use case that is relevant to, to only you, we will save that question and ask your Click Dimensions representative to follow up with you after today's session. We're also recording the session and we'll share the link to the recording once the webinar concludes. Before we dive into today's content, I wanted to make sure that you were all aware that Click Dimensions has a number of resources to help educate you around social media, practices for social media, tips and tricks for making the most out of your social media marketing efforts. And you can find these resources on the Click Dimensions website and blog. So I encourage you to take a few minutes and check those out at your convenience. With that, let's dive in. Let's explore why social media is important. Whether you love it or hate it, and let's face it, there's people in both camps, social media is here to stay. There are almost three and a half billion active people on social media. So your business has to be active on social media too. We know that one third of internet users look to social media for information about products, about brands. So there's a large and continually growing opportunity for businesses that have an active social media presence. At Click Dimensions, we talk a lot about how the buying process has changed and how the transformation and push to digital has really impacted that buyers are doing a whole lot more research before they're ever engaging with someone, before they're ever coming to your website and requesting a demo or asking to speak to a sales rep. And one of those sources is through social media. They're looking at your social media pages. They're looking at what people are saying about you on social media. So it's important to be there to help control that narrative. Most of us as individuals and as consumers are more familiar with the practices of social media for our personal lives. But it is really important for B2B marketers too. 93% use social media for content marketing. It's a tactic that they're taking and they're seeing what things are trending on social media to come up with content ideas. They're sharing content and curating content from other sources to help augment their own content creation. Um, so there is a huge opportunity for B2B marketers there. 96% of B2B marketers are focused on using LinkedIn for organic content distribution. So LinkedIn is hands down the most popular and preferred social network amongst B2B marketers. When we think about the benefits of social, there's a number and they're particularly applicable to today's B2B marketer. Social provides an opportunity to have another channel that people can find and engage your brand, creating more awareness for not just your company, 
but the messages that your company is trying to get out into market. It helps to foster loyalty by engaging in social conversations. You can drive traffic to not just your website, but to campaign landing pages from your social media posts. Those visits can ultimately turn into both leads and hopefully to sales, driving revenue and turning social into a source of new business for your organization. You can gain insights about your audience through social listening, and you can improve your customer experience by utilizing social as an extension of your support organization. We know that B2B is different, but considering the benefits, it's important to know that the social practices for B2B have different goals. There are different preferred platforms. The focus that you see most B2B marketers taking on the content that they share to social is around educating their audience. But they need to measure success differently too. They want to know that they're getting a return on, on the time and effort that they're taking and putting into their social practices. So what kind of ROI, ROI are they able to measure from social? Are they able to track leads? Are those leads turning into sales? Are they showing an increased visits to their website and then converting things from those websites? These are the things that B2B marketers should be looking at when they're considering upping the amount of social in their marketing mix. Let's talk a little bit about ways that B2B marketers can be effective with social media. It's imperative to have a social strategy that has clearly defined goals. These goals should have a specific deadline or time frame that you're working to achieve them in, and they should have a quantifiable measurement. You don't want to set a goal that is simply increase leads from social media. Increase leads in what time frame and by what percent? Perhaps you are newer to social media and you're newer to integrating it into your marketing campaigns and programs, so you might not be at a point where leads are the right goal for you. You might be in an audience building phase. So perhaps your goal could be around increasing the number of followers you have in a given quarter by a given percentage, increasing the number of content shares by X percentage or X number in a given month, quarter, year, etc. You get the point. A goal should have a timeline and a measurement. When we're talking about measurements, let's talk, let's make sure that we're focused on the right ones. Are you focused on what your social reach is? Are you concentrating on engagements? Whether those engagements are likes, their comments, their shares, are you measuring how many people interact with your social content? Maybe you wanna know if your social practices are driving conversions. And those conversions can be different things too. Is it a visit to your website? Is it a content download? Is it submitting a form and becoming a lead? All of that is up to you, but you need to know what metrics matter most to your organization and make sure that the goals you set are aligned to the things that you're able to measure. You also want to make sure that there are metrics that matter outside of just the marketing organization. It's one thing to say that we increased the number of followers we had by 20%. But what does that mean to the larger organization? What does that mean to the CEO who's looking at how things are impacting revenue? Make sure that you're tying your revenue, I'm sorry, tying your metrics back to the things that matter to the larger organization. Next, you wanna focus on your social interactions. According to a recent article published by Forbes, 71% of people that have a positive social interaction with a brand are likely to recommend that brand to others. So what does it mean to interact on social? It means not just posting your content and pushing your information out, but it means commenting on and sharing other people's content. It means listening to what your audience is saying. 
Interacting is about creating a social dialogue instead of a social monologue. It's also important to recognize that social is changing. Like any other digital technology, change is happening fast. It's happening at a rapid pace and it is ongoing and marketers need to regularly adapt to that change. That means analyzing your audience on a regular basis, knowing where your audience is, what they care about, looking at your posting cadence to make sure that you're maintaining relevance. Is your audience all of a sudden shifting to a different social network? Perhaps you were focused on really doing a lot with Twitter, but you're seeing that your audience is doing more for you on LinkedIn. That's a change to adapt to and shift in your strategy to perhaps elevate what you're doing with LinkedIn to maximize social's potential for you. Test out different content types. Maybe a video-based post will drive more interaction and engagement than a post that just has static images. Maybe you want to see if a post that doesn't have an image at all does something for you versus always including images. Are there new influencers that are emerging in your space or that your competitors are paying attention to that you need to pay attention to and potentially engage with? Is there new functionality available around your social technology and your platform that would enable you to do different things on social? These are things that are ever-changing and need to be at the forefront of marketers' mind when they're thinking about how to best use and be most effective with social media marketing. Finally, the tools that you use need to support your social strategy. As your strategy evolves, the sophistication and the capabilities of your social marketing tool need to evolve too. We recognize that there is a plethora of MarTech and social marketing solutions available to marketers today. You need to consider that the tools you use are the right tools for what you're trying to accomplish. Whether you're posting things on Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn by directly logging into those platforms and sharing, or you have an existing social marketing platform that gives you a one stop to post in multiple places and curate content, it's important that you understand and stay on top of all of the social technology available to you to ensure that the tools you use are meeting your needs and will continue to allow you to grow and evolve in your social practices. To show you how the Click Dimensions add-on social marketing platform works, I'm gonna now turn things over to Yancey and he'll dive into the platform and show you a couple things. Yancey? Perfect, thank you, Erin. I'm going to show my screen here. And you guys should be able to see a PowerPoint pop up. Erin, if you can just give me the affirmative that you can see it. Yes, we can. All right, perfect, thank you. Guys, my name is Yancey Joyner. I'm a solution consultant here at Click Dimensions, and I am uh, happy to walk you through our social marketing uh, platform today. I have but one slide uh, to show you, and I'm gonna use that just to give you a feel for the different pillars of our solution. And so we're gonna talk about social publishing, we're gonna talk about demand generation, social listening, advocacy, and social customer care. And each one of these pillars is definitely going to support an overall reporting and analytics view within our social marketing platform. And, and that's where we will begin today. I'll give you a feel for, some, and, and Aaron talked a lot about the importance of establishing goals and benchmarks and how do you understand where you are in meeting those goals and those objectives. So I'd like to start with analytics and then give you a feel for how each one of these pillars contributes to achieving and executing uh, some of the charts and the graphs that you're gonna see from an analytics perspective. And we'll, we'll delve into each one of these as we go. So I'm gonna jump over into our social marketing platform 
And I will say a couple of things up front from a housekeeping standpoint. You will notice that I will log into uh, two different environments. One of them is a live click dimensions environment and that, that we use from a production capacity. And I wanna show you that because I wanna give you a feeling for some of the metrics that we track from a social marketing perspective and some of the goals that we have for ourselves because they're very similar to some of the goals that I see from customers that I work with as they began to uh, formalize their approach related to social marketing. So I'm gonna start within our analytics and there are several different dashboards along the left-hand side related to analytics. I wanna start with our acquisition dashboard because to me it speaks to the most fundamental goal that I see customers have. And that is they want to get a better understanding for a top of the funnel perspective related to the number of posts that I create in a given time period. And Aaron talked about the importance of having a timeline to measure your activity. So here, I can set the parameter from a date perspective on uh, how I want to look at the posts, the impressions, the clicks, and ultimately the conversions. And not only can I do that, but I also can filter this dashboard by the following criteria here. So if I have, you can see campaign tags that we have underway. I could even create dashboarding segmenting one particular campaign. And as you might imagine, these campaigns are tied and sync back to your CRM campaigns. So all of that activity related to social is going to feed in and click uh, and it's going to feed in that overall CRM perspective. If I wanted to filter this, just maybe looked at my, my LinkedIn and my Facebook uh, feeds to see what activity I have there, I could do that. I could even look at this by individual profiles. This filtering capability is going to be present on each dashboard that you see. Now, the real question that we are answering here, and for most customers, if you go to them and you ask them, have you begun to benchmark and create some understanding around the number of posts you need to generate in order to meet the conversion targets that you have? And as Aaron mentioned, those conversion targets are configurable on your side. So whether that's a website visit, it's a form submission, um, whatever that might be, but we wanna help you understand what's that relationship between posts, impressions, clicks, and ultimately conversions. Whatever I select on the left-hand side is going to drive the visual that I see on the right. Perfect, easy analysis to walk my way through that. And then along the bottom, I can see the specific website conversions that were generated during this period. And I can do a little bit of conversion analysis to understand the network that was uh, responsible, whether this was organic, it was curated, or from an advocacy perspective, and any sort of campaign tags associated with that. Um, really important way to start because every activity that we do within our social platform. In this example today is going to be able to, to drive to the point that we are creating more conversions as a percentage of the posts that we generate. Now, if this is a, a good place to start from an acquisition standpoint, understanding how we're generating posts and ultimately how they lead to conversions, we also wanna understand how did our customers engage with our posts in order to drive the level of conversions that we see today. So I select my engagement tab. And as you might imagine, the time scale can be adjusted and, and the filters are the same as you saw within our acquisition tab. But here we're going to be able to filter and, and slice our way through the particular engagements by, by looking at links and clicks, how many likes, comments, how many detailed expands, user follows, media clicks, shares, post clicks. Um, this is going to be important because these are eight key metrics around engagements that most of our customers would have some degree of difficulty reporting on today. And we want to kind of close that gap 
help you see that, help you understand better what type of content is resonating with your audience in the most meaningful way. Just beneath that, and these, these two charts also answer key questions that most most of my customers struggle with. And the first one is engagement by network. Now, this is this is a live view into our Click Dimensions environment. And you can see right now, 78% um, of our engagement came through LinkedIn, followed by Facebook, followed by Twitter. I'm probably, you know, we, we do a lot of, definitely do a lot of B2B organic um, posts through LinkedIn. We also do quite a bit of advocacy work through LinkedIn, but most organizations have a hard time telling you exactly where that those engagements are coming from. And we feel like it's really popular, to, uh, be very important to be able to map back to that. Now, I also can look at engagement by channel. At Click, we have a goal of at least 50% of our engagements being driven from an advocacy perspective. So our internal team members creating posts, uh, their followers out on primarily LinkedIn or picking those up, it helps to create and establish their uh, brand advocacy and their subject matter expertise as well. But I can see the amount of engagement by advocacy, uh, by organic, and then by curation. This is gonna be important because when we go to our publishing capability within the product, you're gonna see how we have different use cases for creating organic content, curated content, and then content from an advocacy perspective. I'm gonna select this one more time and see if I can have the, uh, the rendering of this finish up for us. There would be just a moment. Okay, what I'm going to navigate down to my my last section, and that's going to be content. And let me come back and finish on engagement. I'm going to select uh, content, and here I'm looking to tie together my acquisition strategy, um, the way my content was engaged, and now I want to get a better feel for what type of content drove that engagement and ultimately that level of conversion. So here I'm looking at posts by type, so I can see the number of status updates, of images, of links, of videos that I might have and how that's driving. I can see my top engaging links, my top converting links. I am a big believer that when I go to most customers and I say, hey, over the last 60 days, what were the top converting links that you had? You typically, it, it's a manual effort to find that and report on it and replicate it and create scale around it. And I, I, the same is true for the top engaging links that you have. So I can see uh, my links here and then the total number of engagements there. There are definitely lessons learned in understanding those engagements and the relationship to those links. I also can review content analysis so here I'm looking at keywords and hashtags. The larger the font and the deeper the green, the more interaction I have. The lighter the font and the smaller, um, the, the lighter the font and the smaller the, uh, the lettering there, the less content I've had. So I wanna make sure I'm including these keywords and hashtags in my social post as I move forward. But, giving me a better feeling for what sort of content is resonating with my audience out there. Now, I'm gonna swing back over to engagement just for a moment. Um, and if I can have this to render, I do wanna to speak to the, the fact that we can, track, we can track our engagements by uh, the time of day. And if this will render for me, you're gonna be able to see a, uh, uh, there we go, so we, we can have, where we have a large green circle, that lets me know that I'm getting engagement in that period of time. Where I have a large either amber or red circle, the engagement level is not very strong. For us in a production environment, you can see that between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m., that's the sweet spot for most of our engagements. So. There is some artificial intelligence behind the scenes, uh, and we have some auto-posting capability. 
And you, as you might imagine, we're probably going to steer clear from posting uh, in that 7 to 9 a.m. range because we just don't get the engagement there that we do uh, in, in other periods of the day. So this helps me to understand when are people most likely to engage with the posts that I have out there. Um, so I will say, if you think about acquisition, engagement, and content, these are three common dashboard areas that a lot of people have goals and metrics that they're looking to establish. And they're also looking for a little bit of best practices from a vendor on how to establish these social marketing analytics. Uh, and, and I think you see we do have an approach there that is going to begin to help you answer some of those questions around why is certain content engaged with more and others and, and ultimately how are we driving more conversions? Now, once I, and you can see there are other dashboards that we could, we could cover. Uh, I, I certainly can cover those for you at a, at a later date. But once I do any sort of dashboard presentation with customers, the first question that usually emerges is, what was the level of effort necessary to drive the sort of dashboards that I'm seeing today? So how do I think about creating more posts that have better quality, that are more engaging, that are driving those conversion metrics? And that kind of leads us into the supporting pillars that we talked about and how you can interact with Click Dimensions Social in order to drive these sorts of analytics. So I am going to log into our demo environment. So I'm just going to switch my account here and go to our Click Dimensions sales demo. And you'll notice I have additional functionality here that I didn't within our own production environment. And uh, makes sense so that for production I have you can tell that I can limit the uh, capability that a user would have. I would like to start with publishing first. I look at publishing as being a foundational component to our whole approach. Uh, there are four different ways that I'm going to walk you through publishing content. I think each one has its place, but I want to, I think most of our customers are striving to create content at scale, at a, at a larger quantity, and at a better quality. And because there is a definite correlation between the quality of the content and the number of conversions that we have. So under publishing, the first thing I wanna point out is that we have an overall calendar that represents all of our social activity across my organization. So no longer are we forced to have the people that are submitting and, and posting content, all of their entries are living in their own account, their own profile. Here, we have a more consolidated approach. And this is going to allow me not only to see all of the content at once, but it's going to allow me to invoke that same filtering capability so that if I wanted to go in and just zero in on a certain campaign, I could do that. Um, I also could go in and maybe just create, maybe I just want to see my Facebook and Instagram activity. So really easy to go in and use the power of a consolidated calendar, but yet use filtering to get to the specific nuts and bolts that I'm uh, most interested in. Now, the first way to post would be I can create a new post from here. And you can see that we can post for LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and, and YouTube. And pretty, pretty traditional stuff here. I can choose the platform and then I can choose the profile that I want to post to. So for LinkedIn, for Facebook, you can see for Twitter, I can go through and choose the profile that's relevant to me. And if I just wrote out something really simple here to get us started. Now, once I have some content here the way that I want it, a couple of things to point out. I can designate this to a certain campaign. That's important because I've got campaigns in CRM I might want to map activity to. I could add uh, an image, a GIF, a file. Uh, I could do it from a local file. I have a 
just a social market. I like this uh, this little icon here, so we'll bring this in. This is a little social marketing planning process, but I could pull information from a media library, from a direct link, Facebook, Instagram, lots of different ways to add content there. We'll select add. And I also have the ability to, if I created just the most phenomenal post here and I wanted to copy this to my advocacy board, I could do that. I also could schedule when this post is slated to go out. So right now, get slated to go out today. If I wanted to add another date, let's say we do it the 26th and we do it the second. So I've got three dates for this post set up. We'll select set there. This is a new capability, but I can add a PDF to this post. This comes in handy for people a lot of times people will put a PDF behind a gated procedure. So whether it's fill out a form, you get the PDF. But if you have customer facing information, whether it's a customer FAQ or a product FAQ, you want to communicate that in the post, we can add a PDF right here and have that associated with the post as well. Once I have this post the way that I want it, I can save it as a draft. I may be 50% complete. I can go back and work on the remainder of it. I can invoke a workflow to send this for approval. I have a lot of customers that are government agencies or they have some sort of regulatory requirement and there's a need for maybe somebody from finance or legal to review. We could do that, we could support a workflow, or I could go ahead and just schedule this particular post and it would be set to go based on the time frame that I had selected there. That's the first way that I can generate a post. Now, within publishing, you'll notice that we also have campaigns. And campaigns, as I mentioned before, map directly back to campaigns that I might be executing in CRM, so that's perfect. Um, I designated a campaign here for our Click Dimension social webinar, and I'll open that. When I do, you'll notice I land on a calendar, and this calendar is just specific to this campaign. Perfect. So all of my posts and uh, entries are specifically for this campaign. My messages icon here represents all of the approved and draft messaging, almost a library of content for this campaign. I and I'm and I'm going to show you some ways that we can create this content, but this is really the intellectual property that I'm going to use behind this campaign itself. Now, we talked about the need to drive more conversions and that being driven by an increase in the quantity and the quality of posts. And I want to point out the second method of creating content, and that is through my message generator. If I select that icon, this is going to allow me to go in and, and select a URL from a blog or other web content that I feel like resonates for this particular campaign. So my challenge is I found content but it's not in the form of a post. How can I quickly convert that at scale? So I select my URL, and once I hit next, I'm going to see the hashtags that are associated with this particular post, so the recommendations. I can either keep those as they are, or I could add additional hashtags to that. That's completely configurable. But once I select next, Here's where it gets really interesting. I can go in and scale up or down the number of posts that would be created from this particular web article. So instead of me having to go in and manually create those calendar events, I can scale these messaging. So you can see very easy to go in and manipulate the number of uh, posts or messages that would be created. I'll keep it simple and we'll just do one for each. And as soon as I select generate, you'll notice that I have three new drafts to consider within my messages. So I'm gonna go and select the, um, the Facebook version of that post that we, just, that we just talked about. So I'm gonna select that. You can see the content that was created. I can flip this over into full screen. 
so that I can see the desktop and the mobile version. All of the editing capability is still there. So if I wanted to add content or tweak or change this particular post, I could. I could save this as a draft. I could invoke the workflow for approval, or I could go ahead and save this. If I save it, I, it's going to move to an approved um, status. And I'm going to do the same thing for the LinkedIn version of this. And you'll see why in just a moment. But I'm going to go ahead and select save. Now, the typical use case is maybe at the beginning of a campaign or the middle of a campaign, but you probably have different schedules of when you're really looking to push out content for a campaign. And we believe the message generator is a great way for you to be able to scale the amount of content that you can create. That's perfect. What we also want to help you do is to post that material at scale as well. So if I've generated a lot of content that's really relevant, so I'm meeting both the quantity and the quality benchmark, I want to be able to communicate out that as effectively and quickly as possible. So I have an auto poster capability that will allow me to select the platform. So for Facebook, let's say that I'm going to post um, for, and, and Troximo is a sample posting uh, example that we have. You'll notice it when we go over to our social listening. I'm going to be listening for content that's coming from the profiles that you see here. But I can designate the profiles that I want to have posted. And the same thing would hold true for Facebook, for LinkedIn, for Twitter, for Instagram, and for YouTube. And when I select next, I now can go in and grab, and I'm going to create my, I'm going to grab my hello world, and I'll grab the last two that I created for my message generator and select next and i'm taken to the date range that this post should go out if i select the queue settings i'm going to use that ai in the background and if you think about those circles that you saw in our investment map there when our engagements are most likely to be open based on red yellow and green this would allow the system to auto compute when we were going to send those and auto schedule those. If I'm comfortable doing that myself, I can set the start date and the finish date. Let's push it out by a week. And since I'm doing it manually, I'm going to take Saturday and Sunday and Monday out of the equation. And I'm also going to take Friday out. Once I've settled on my schedule there, I can go ahead and select generate schedule. I'm going to have a calendar appear and I'm going to be able to see those posts that I just, those messages that I just tentatively scheduled. While you see the little clock icon, that lets me know that I can still move these around. So I'm envisioning a social meeting where we're thinking about, hey, for this segment of the campaign, these are the posts that we're targeting. I might move some of these around to better manually accommodate what I feel like my engagement rates are going to be. But once I've settled on the sequencing and the scheduling of these posts, I can go up and accept this. I could save this calendar as a draft, maybe make some additional modifications. I could send for approval. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and accept these. And now those messages will be stored as pending posts in my calendar for this particular uh, campaign. So that's the second way that I can post. And I like to, th those I think of as more organic posts. On the left-hand side, you can see that I have a content icon. And this represents my ability to create a post by curated content. So I can establish user-defined channels of content that I'm interested in. So maybe it's B2B marketing, maybe it's marketing analytics, whatever it might be, I can have different channels that are devoted to different campaigns. Makes perfect sense. Um, so now I can go in and have this curated content built for me. I could review an article, read that article, and if I felt like this was something that was relevant to this campaign, I can take this curated content, I can post it now as well. So that's the third way that I can post. 
And once again, it gives you the feel for really how we're trying to help you increase the amount of posting and the quality of that posting overall. Now, the fourth and final way that we can utilize our publishing capability for posting is going to be where you see the uh, little microphone icon here for advocacy. I'm gonna give you a, a backstage view of an advocacy board, and then I'm gonna give you a front stage view. Now, this is the backstage view. If you were an administrator or someone that set this environment up, you can see for this advocacy board, here, here's all my messaging. Um, here are the topics that, so I've got topics related to blogs, sales content, thought leadership tips, that's perfect. Who are the advocates that I have with, for this advocacy board? You can see them posted all here, as well as settings related to the administrative aspect of this advocacy board itself. Now, most of you probably won't be living in this world, you would be living in this social advocacy board here. This is my own social advocacy board at Click. We utilize this solution ourselves. Most of my content is going to be shared via LinkedIn. So every Monday and every Friday, I go in, I take a look at the content that has been placed in my, I'm a team member for this advocacy board. I can go through, I can review content, if I feel like this is something that I want to share, I can select the share icon. I could share this right now, or I could go through, and this is what I do on Mondays and Fridays, I can select the uh, time icon there, and I can automatically schedule this. Once again, this is, this is relying on the AI in the background to look for my, uh, for the people that follow me on LinkedIn and the posts that I have historically sent out, when are people most likely to engage with those posts? And if I automatically schedule, the system's gonna look for those holes and place my post when it's most historically been likely to be engaged with. So I go through, I review what's new, if I think it's gonna resonate with my people that follow me on LinkedIn, or maybe it even enhances my brand related to being a, a solution consultant, I go through, I pick some, and I automatically schedule those, and they're gonna go out without me even thinking any more about scheduling, posting. I, I, I do enough related to this around solution consulting. I don't wanna go through and create my own post. This is a great way to do that. So. Those are the four different ways that we can publish content and I think drive back to that first acquisition dashboard that we show. How many posts are we, are we creating? What kind of engagement are we driving off those posts? And ultimately, how many conversions do we have? Now, once you have, I think, amped your game up around posting, it then becomes really interesting to engage in social listening. And social listening um, it is going to allow you to go in and look internally as well as externally. So when I, when I mean internally, I, I created a stream here called brand mentions. So every time that the brand that I'm posting under is mentioned, I get a mention on Twitter or, or a home feed, or you can see here within LinkedIn or Facebook, I can see the interaction in real time of others as they're interacting with the posts that I have out there. So how many likes, how many retweets, what sort of buzz is this creating out there? And is it getting the preliminary uh, input and interaction that I thought it would? These are completely configurable. If I scroll over to the right and you see the little plus sign, if I wanted to go in and create a new listening stream feed, I could do that now. Now, I also could turn this and look at my competitors and get a better feel for what are they posting? What campaigns are they running? What's being, what's being retweeted on their side? So you can see here, I have a feed from MailChimp, uh, from Marketo, from HubSpot. Uh, I wanna learn from what's working from them and I also wanna learn from what's not working from them. So it's a great way when you think about social listening to be able to look internally and externally. I also can do uh, listening around keywords, around relevant hashtags, Twitter mentions, and as I 
mentioned before, I can even go through and add additional tabs that you might see here based on any user-defined criteria that's relevant to me related to social listening. So very important because as the quantity and the quality of your posts increase, then it becomes really relevant to get a feel for how are those posts being received? How are my target audiences interacting? Now, I think a close relative to streaming uh, is, is going to be our inbox. And so why is a social inbox important? A social inbox aggregates all of the inbound social conversations into one place, allowing team members uh, to manage and track responses at scale. So a social inbox can be used to manage sales types in queries, uh, feedback on products or services, I have several customers that manage uh, support interaction via social media, uh, via their social inbox. So that's an, another um, very credible way where I can receive a support query and then route that to the appropriate person uh, right within my, my social inbox. So the way that this is organized, I have an inbox and that I can look at items that have been assigned uh, to me. And if I go to my filter here, this is the behind the scenes setup. So you can see I'm, I'm interested in looking at things that have been assigned to myself. Within our inbox, we can, we've got two statuses. They're either open or they're closed. So I wanna see items where uh, that are open, that are assigned to me. And right now I'm only looking at Twitter, but if I wanted to look at Twitter and maybe LinkedIn together, I can change the networks that I'm querying. So very easy to go in and do that. But here's probably where I most, um, you know, so if I think about Twitter, I know I'm going to get mentions, replies, and DMs. If it's Facebook, I'm gonna be concerned with tags, comments, and DMs. If it's Instagram, it's just comments. But anytime I am the recipient of any of these forms of communication and the status is open, I'm going to, to see that particular item. And when I see that item, you can see if I select it, I am right now the owner of that item. If I wanted to change that ownership, I could go through and transfer this over to a colleague of mine. I could transfer that to Kevin if I wanted to, or I could select the uh, item itself and you can see that I could close it, I could reopen it, I could mark as unread, or I could assign right from here. So another way that I can make that assignment, I also could go in and uh, reply, retweet. Uh, I can like from right within my inbox itself without having to log into the social platform to do that. And I could even associate a note that maybe I want one of my colleagues to see and respond back to. This is great if you have someone that maybe they're maybe they're unhappy or disgruntled with a product or service, you want to quickly take this and communicate this over to someone in PR or in sales or in legal, I certainly can do that. You also have the, the capability, and this is probably, I see this more in production, where we have an administrator and they are taking the assignments to anyone. So in the, maybe they're not large enough to scale so that everyone needs to assign individual but this is where I could come in as an administrator and I see everything that's assigned to everyone and that same level of functionality that we talked about before, where if I select an item, I can then go through and make assignments of who now should be responsible for this. I could reply, I could post notes, uh, and I could reassign that as well. And the same filtering capability would, would be there for my social inbox. Real goal here is to make sure that you know, our social media conversations always start as soon as a user sends a DM or leaves a comment for any user, we're going to be engaged right away and be able to respond at scale, as opposed to have users managing their individual social platforms on their own profiles. That certainly is not going to scale especially as we begin to post uh, more messaging and more content in an effort to drive greater conversions. So I hope that gave you um, at least
least an introduction into our social marketing capabilities from uh, analytics all the way through to publishing, social listening, advocacy, and our social inbox capabilities. So I will uh, end my section, and if there are any uh, questions or other comments, we certainly can address those now. That's great, thanks, Yancy. Melissa, do we have any questions that have come in? Yes, we have a few. Um, Yancy, someone is asking, can you tag people from LinkedIn and Facebook while scheduling a post? You can, yes. Okay, and Aaron, um, somebody's asking, where can they find the resources for social media marketing that you mentioned earlier? Absolutely, thanks, Melissa. All of those resources are available on the Click Dimensions website in our resource library, as well as additional social media commentary and posts on our Click Dimensions blog. Thank you. And that wraps up all the questions for today. Thank you, Aaron and Yancy, for presenting on why social media is so valuable today. Thank you, everyone.